Uh, Mr. Clint Hill, former Secret Service agent. Good morning, uh, Mr. Hill. Good morning. And I feel like I should call you Mr. Hill. Well, that's perfectly all right, but you can call me Clint. <laughs> okay, Clint. It's an honor, really, to have you uh, here on the program, a man who uh, has been involved so much in history and, and at such a level uh, for uh, so many years. Uh, you have probably done countless interviews. I know you do in a bunch this morning on uh, the book that you've got out right now. So probably a question after question has been repeated to you. But I've got to ask you, how did you make the choice of getting into a service like this where you're putting your life on the line for somebody else? Well, when I uh, came into the Secret Service, I had been a special agent for counter- in counterintelligence for three years, and I loved the investigative part of that work. And so I decided that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life with some type of investigative work. Secret Service at that time had 269 agents in the world, that was total complement worldwide, so there were no jobs available unless somebody either died or retired. I was very fortunate that somebody retired, and I was given the opportunity to join the Secret Service. And, and, and how soon after you joined were you assigned to uh, the, the president himself? Within the first year, they sent me back for a 30-day Look, see, they uh, went, had to uh, see if I was the right type of person for that kind of job, and then I was selected, and I was transferred back to the White House one year after I entered. Being a Secret Service agent, you are there to protect, obviously, the president or whomever you're assigned to, uh, and you're a part of their everyday life, but I, I'm, I'm guessing you're kind of trained and, and supposed to be kind of a ghost in amongst their everyday life. How do you do that? How are you there but not there? Well, that's just the way the job is. You're, you're Kind of in the shadows. We provide a uh, secure environment for these people to function and do their job in uh, and try to stay out of their way, uh, provide it in such a manner that they are absolutely safe but able to perform whatever job they have to perform. And over the time period that you were assigned to John F. Kennedy and then Mrs. Kennedy, um, you, you were privy to hearing and overhearing conversations and seeing things and stuff like that. We know later on after the assassination and, and then uh, Mrs. Kinney w- went on to marry uh, Aristotle Onassis, there was some comment by JFK prior to the two of them when they were together and, and a trip over to Greece that you overheard uh, kind of uh, interesting about the observation that JFK had. Well, in 1961, I was assigned. I first did the uh, advance in Paris for Mrs. Kennedy, and then I was asked to go to Athens to Greece to uh, kind of set up a trip for her to, to Greece. And I was called into the Oval Office, and the president uh, asked that I, uh, while in Greece, uh, try to ensure that Mrs. Kennedy did not cross paths with Aristotle Onassis. I didn't know why. I really don't know yet But uh, at this time. But the assumption was that it was strictly because Onassis was at that time in some legal difficulty with the United States. He had been fined some $7 million or so, and uh, it wasn't probably the best move politically to, have, politically to have her in any way associated with it. So you don't think there was any kind of romantical uh, barrier that was being put up there? Romantic? Not at all. Not okay. at that time. Speaking of that, you, you've probably been asked this beforehand, and there's all kinds of allegations of uh, extra uh, things going on with the president at the time with other women. Did you see or get a feel of any of that? I never saw anything like that. I was never present at anything like that, so I'm not aware of any situation like that to develop. Let's talk real quick about that fateful day, 1963, November 22nd there, and you were there walking along with a motorcade and a shot rings out. Just instinct, I mean, what went through your mind briefly in, in that whole scenario as you jumped on the back of the limousine? Well, it was strictly a reaction. I heard the explosive noise in the right rear of the motorcade behind us. I saw that the president had grabbed his throat and was moving to his left. Something had happened. So I jumped, ran, tried to get up on top of the car and placed myself behind President and Mrs. Kennedy to form a shield uh, between them and anybody who was trying to do them any further harm. That was my intent. You were there through so many different things in their lives, the uh, the death of a child, the birth of a child, and then later on after Mrs. Kennedy uh, was a, a widow. Um, any favorite memories that you recall from all that? I know, and, and this was in the book, and it's a great book, by the way. Well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, there's some wonderful memories, like when John Jr. was born. Well, it was only two weeks after I got the assignment to be with Mrs. Kennedy, or, or our many trips that we made, whether it was to India or Pakistan or uh, to uh, 
South America. We were down in uh, Bogota, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Caracas. We traveled a great deal, and it was all extremely interesting. After the service that uh, you performed at that level, you were elevated to some uh, more uh, uh, supervisor type uh, roles. Uh, real quick, what were those in your uh, in your uh, career before you retired? When I left Mrs. Kennedy in 1964, I was returned to the White House detail and became the special agent in charge of presidential protection during the Johnson administration. Uh, then I eventually was moved to headquarters as a deputy assistant director, and then finally as the assistant director for all protection for the Secret Service. All right. Mr. Hill, Clint, I would love, and I could talk to you for hours, but uh, I know we have limited time, so we'll just continue to read the book. It's Mrs. Kennedy and uh, Me. It's a it's a great book, and, and thank you for the service that you gave to the country, to the president, and thank you for joining us this morning here on The Morning Show. Well, thank you very much. Have a good day out there in Eureka. You too. Bye-bye.